Good morning, everyone. I am so excited to be with you this morning. My name is Alexis Minocal Harrigan. I work at code.org and I am so thrilled to be here with my colleagues, Maureen Sturgeon and Aaron Bond for one of our several, uh, one of our many class chats that we're doing for our CS Journey series. Um, I wanna get us started with uh, some tough hitting questions right from the beginning, but before I do, um, anybody who has questions or is tuning in from either their classroom or their office or their home, please go ahead and feel free to put questions in the chat. We'll try to get to as many of them as possible throughout today's discussion. Um, but I wanna start with an icebreaker. And this morning I was chatting with some members of my team and we found out there's this company that exists that actually will carve um, people's faces and heads into blocks of cheese. So my question for you is, if you could have in your kitchen, on your counter, someone's head, anybody's, anybody's head, anybody's face carved into a block of cheese, knowing that you would eventually have to eat part of it, whose head would you want sitting on your kitchen counter as a block of cheese? I'll start with Maureen. <laughs> All right, that's a hilarious question. Um, off the top of my head, I'd probably say my roommate, Brian, because I think it would be quite the shock for him to come into the kitchen and discover that he is a block of cheese. So uh, that's probably who I'd pick. That's great. <laughs> Aaron, how about you? This is so silly. Um, I think I would go with my grandfather um, because he has a very strange sense of humor. He's from Wisconsin, so it would be fitting. Um, and I would just like having him in my kitchen all the time. That's great. Thank you both for humoring me with that fun and silly question this morning. Uh, so let's dive into the first question. Uh, I would love for you to each yourselves, share what your role is currently and how you got to the place you're at. And we'll go ahead and start with Maureen. Cool. So hi, I'm Maureen. I am a software engineer at code.org. And let me tell you a little bit about my journey to become a software engineer. Um, okay, so let's go all the way back. Um, in middle and high school, I really did not know what I wanted to do. I thought, you know, maybe I'll be an engineer, maybe I'll do something in like the sciences. Um, I probably want to go to college, but I really didn't know what I wanted to do. So I got into college and I started taking some classes, a variety of classes. I took um, some chemistry classes, some general requirements that I needed to take for my university. I worked in the engineering department the first year and I took some math classes. And what I discovered was uh, quarter after quarter, I kept wanting to take more math classes because my professor was just super awesome. They were really fun. It was a lot more fun than like high school math or other math classes I'd taken in the past. It was super engaging and challenging in a way I hadn't experienced before. And so about a year and a half, two years in, I was like, you know what? I'm gonna study math. Like, this is fun. I wanna keep taking math classes. This is what I'm gonna study followed by a moment of panic of like, well, what do you do with a math degree? Like who studies math? That seems a little bit crazy. And so I got a little stressed out about, you know, what kind of job am I gonna have if I study math? Um, so I ended up chatting with a professor and said, it was a math professor. And I said, hey, I wanna study math, but like, I don't know what I would do with a math degree. And he was super nice and was like, okay, well, let me connect you with some of my old students who have graduated with a math degree and you can talk to them about what they're doing. So I connected with a few different people. A lot of them had like data analysis type jobs. And I got a little bit more of an idea of what they do day to day. And then the other people that I talked to were like my friends and the other students in my major and was like, hey, you know, what are you guys gonna do with this major? Like, what are your plans after school? 
And what I discovered is a lot of those people in my classes were also taking computer science classes. And at that time in college, I'd never taken a computer science class that wasn't offered at my high school. I really didn't know what computer science was, but I was like, you know what, if they can do it, I can do it. So I started taking computer science classes and I love them, but this was kind of late into my college. I was probably about 21 when I took my first computer science class. And uh, so I didn't have time to do an entire computer science major. So I ended up graduating um, with a degree in math and a minor in computer science. And I popped out into the real world and still didn't know what I wanted to do. So I had an internship out of college um doing data analysis at a credit union and i really didn't enjoy that internship um i didn't like the cubicle life i didn't like getting dressed up in uncomfortable clothing every day the time went by really slow i thought it was boring it wasn't very engaging and i thought you know this isn't making me happy i gotta find something else i really miss the computer science like the programming that I was doing in school, I wonder if I can get a job programming, but I only have a minor. So I'll probably have to look for a junior or internship position. So I started studying really hard. This little guy in the blue with the blue face is me panicking, trying to study um, to get my foot in the door somewhere. And luckily I had a friend from school who already had a job and um, a company reached out to her and said, hey, we have a, a software engineering internship. And she's like, oh, I already have a job, but my friend is looking for a job. And so I interviewed for that internship, that software engineering internship and got that internship. And that was my foot in the door. And I totally loved it. It was like really cool office space. I could wear whatever I wanted. It was very relaxed. It was really fun. It was engaging. The days went by really quickly. And um, that sort of led me to where I am today. It's uh, really great to hear how people end up in their current roles, both at code.org, but particularly in the software field as well. Erin, I would love to ask you the same question. Who are you? How did you get to where you are? And what are you doing now? Sure. Um, so I'm Erin Bond. I'm also a software engineer at code.org. I'm actually on the same team as Maureen, but have a very different path um, to getting there. So I'll share my screen and tell you a little bit about my journey. Um, in middle school, I really loved two things. I loved reading and I loved dissecting things. Um, my eighth grade science class had an award for most enthusiastic dissector and I won it. And I just thought it was fun and interesting to look inside of things and to see how, how they worked. And so from there, I thought I should be a doctor. So my plan was I was going to be Meredith Gray. I was going to get to wear scrubs. I was going to go leverage this background in sciences that I had and um, made it to college and decided to major in neuroscience with that intent um, to go be a physician until I got a summer internship at the Science Center and realized that I loved interacting with kids and explaining science to people and seeing that wonder and spark um, in them. And so I thought, okay, this is fine, this is fine. I like kids, I'll just be a pediatrician. Um, but when I went back to my junior year, I took an education course um, just as a humanities requirement that had a field service component where I was in schools, elementary schools, um, working with students uh, in order to get credit for this class. I really, really liked it. And so after some hard thinking, I sort of hummed and hawed and really uh, wasn't totally sure what I wanted to do, but decided that I would try teaching. So I taught elementary school um, for a few years. I had first and second graders, which was really fun. I even got to have my face on a cake one year for our end of the year celebration. <laughs> this is my teaching team. Um, and it was great, but for me, it was very, exhausting um, because I was with other people all day every day and 30 different small humans needed my attention I just found out that it was really wearing out my energy stores like I was just tired um, and so I decided that I instead was going to switch to work one-on-one -on -one with students um, so I started a tutoring company 
Uh, this is me on my scooter that I drove all around the city, meeting with um, families and students, helping folks who were struggling with reading and writing and um, sort of staying organized and focused in school. And what I liked about it was that one-on-one -on -one connection. And I liked helping people who were having the roughest time in school. And I liked finding ways to motivate students. Um, but I had one particular student who was not motivated, not interested, really obstinate, didn't, did not want to hang out with me. And so uh, we brokered a deal. And I said, look, when you have a cooperative minute with me, if you get your stuff done for the amount of time that we have to do, then you um, can have screen time. And he just became a totally different student. And so I had to ask him, what are you doing on your screen that you love so much? And he told me about this game called Lightbot. I don't know if any of you have ever played it. You get a little robot to go through a maze and jump on these squares. I started playing it. All of a sudden it was three o'clock in the morning and I wanted to solve the last level and I was super into it. Um, and so I understood like, why is this is so engaging? And I learned more and more about this game and found out that it teaches introductory computer programming concepts. And it kind of blew my mind. I had never considered computer science. It wasn't offered at my high school. It wasn't offered at my college. I just never been exposed to that possibility. Um, and once I did, I wanted more of it. I wanted that problem solving, that puzzle, that sort of engagement. Um, and so learn to code as a grown-up. I didn't write my first line of code uh, until I was 28 years old at an organization called Ada Developers Academy, which is for folks who are interested in changing careers. And as part of that, got an internship at code.org. Um, and have been there ever since. So it's been about four and a half years. Um, so far, no one has put my face on a cake, but I did get this cute picture from a school visit uh, where we were beta testing some new tools. And it's just been a really, really interesting, fun, um, satisfying blend of education and technology to be here at Code.org, building tools for teachers and students in a way that suits how my brain works. Thank you both so much. Those were great responses and very different journeys to get to where you are. I would love to hear a little bit about what day looks like for you. Um, I obviously am not a software engineer. I sit on our advocacy team where I get to talk to policymakers and try to pass computer science education policies. I would love to hear what does a typical day look like for a software engineer at code.org? Uh, Maureen, I will uh, throw this question to you. Awesome. All right. I created a little diagram of what I think my typical day looks like. So let me see. All right. So I would say actually the majority of my time is actually spent um, researching and reading. This might be Googling for how other people have solved problems online or how to write logic in a specific coding language or something like that. Um, it's also, I spend a lot of time reading our code base, you know, we have a really big code base, there's a lot of code, and in order to write new code and add features, you kind of need to understand the whole picture, you need to understand how that code is going to fit in with the code that already exists. So I spend a lot of time researching and reading. And then I spend a little bit of time, like 10% of my time reviewing code. It's a peer review, kind of like you would do in school when you're reviewing each other's papers in English or something like that. Um, we review each other's code and try to catch errors and for, um, for each other. And then about 30% of my time is spent um, actually writing code for the features that I'm building. Um, then we got this little chunk up here, about 15% of my time is spent in meetings where we plan what we're going to build, how we're going to build it, how long it's going to take, stuff like that. And then I have 10% of my time is spent um, collaborating with my coworkers. Maybe we're trying to solve a hard problem together or um, coding together or something like that. Um, so I kind of split this pie up into a blue section and a green section because I wanted to show that actually most of my day is spent working independently, um, which works really well for me as an introvert. Um, I love, you know, collaborating with other people, but it makes me really tired. So I really like having this independent um, working time. And then, you know, it's nice to be able to collaborate with other people every once in a while, too. Thanks, Maureen. 
And as a reminder for those who are tuning in from classrooms around the US, please feel free to pop a question into the chat under the Q&A feature, and we would love to get to your questions. While we wait for those questions to come in, Erin, I would love to hear from you. Uh, we heard a little bit of things that you enjoy doing outside of your workday. Outside of work, I love um, being outside. I have a toddler, so we spend a lot of time going on little hikes and going to the farm and playing at playgrounds. Um, I also love scuba diving. My husband's a marine biologist, and so we spend a lot of time going on adventures when we can and looking at tide pools. Um, and in general, uh, I also love writing. So that passion that I had early on of reading um, has now stayed with me, and it's something that I do uh, outside of work as well. Anything interesting that you have written in the last year or two? I write mostly picture books. So I used to write stories when I was teaching uh, to help sort of reinforce concepts or teach ideas um, and then have since just do it for fun. That's great. Thank you. Um, one of the questions that came in from Ann Gorman, are you happy with your career choices? And I'll, I'll pose this to both of you. Erin, since we're, we're with you, let's just stick with you. How are, are you happy with your career choices? I am. I think one of the things that I've always been mindful about as I'm thinking about my career is how it fits in with the rest of my life. I knew that I wasn't going to be the kind of person who wanted to do my job all day, every day, and have it be the only thing that existed as part of my identity. Um, and so every choice that I have made has been one where I get to help people in some way, I get to have a life that feels well-rounded and I get to challenge myself um, to learn and grow. And so those are three criteria. And so if you make your choices based on your values, I think it's hard not to be happy with what you end up with. I completely agree. Maureen, knowing that your boss is probably watching, are you happy with your career choice? <laughs> I am so happy with my career choice. It's funny, I like, if you would have asked me what I was gonna be, you know, 10 years ago, I wouldn't I didn't I didn't even know what computer science was so this is a really kind of unexpected path for me um but I I think a lot about like just how grateful I am to have found a career where I really do love what I do day to day I'm like super engaged um I'm just super grateful to have found the career that I've found thanks Maureen and I'd love to stick with you for the next question as well what are some of the challenges you faced along the way and how have you approached overcoming some of those challenges to get where you are today? Definitely. Um, you know, like my journey sort of showed for a long time, I didn't know what I wanted to do. And there was a lot of like trial and error to get through that. Um, I think also getting my foot in the door with computer science was hard. You have to have a lot of persistence to learn computer science. And then also to get a job in computer science. And, you know, I've had interviews that the interviews are hard and I've had interviews I haven't passed. And you take a moment and you're like, is this the right career path for me? You know, but you got to realize that when something doesn't work out, it's just redirecting you um, to something better and to keep going for it. Thanks, Maureen. Uh, one of the questions in one of the classrooms was asking, uh, another student is curious if most of your time in front of a computer, and do you like spending most of your time in front of a computer? Erin, um, I'd love to hear from you. I actually have mixed feelings about this. Um, I spend a lot of time, you can see the corner of a cork board over there. I've got a whiteboard over here. So in addition to spending time at the computer, I'm also spending time mapping out how systems work or how I want things to fit together or what my plan for what I'm going to code is going to be. Um, I also do a lot of my best thinking when I'm out and walking. So if I'm sort of mulling over a problem, I might do that while I'm taking a stroll around my neighborhood. Um, so yes and no. I mean, my actual coding time is clearly spent sitting in front of a screen, but a lot of my thinking and planning and organizing and even some of my collaborating happens away from a screen. Thanks, Erin. Maureen, same question. Are you in front of a computer all day long and do you enjoy that? Yeah, this is a great question because, you know, I don't really enjoy the sitting in front of a screen part of my job, but I feel that during the day I'm so engaged by problem solving that I don't you know, my mind is somewhere else. I'm imagining like all the potential solutions. I'm super engaged. 
So the sitting in front of a screen is sort of not a big deal, I guess. Um, and then of course there's things that you can do during the day. You can go out, take a walk, you can get a standing desk where you're standing up. Um, there's a lot, and uh, you know, after work, I'm not at the computer anymore. So there's lots of ways to balance it. Thank you. Erin, I'm curious, what is a project that you're working on right now or a project that you've worked on recently that you're really proud of or most proud of? Oh, I'm excited to tell you. I'll share my screen again. Um, I recently worked on a project to teach AI and machine learning to students. Um, and so, oh gosh, hang on. Um, and so the way that it worked is for the first time code.org was teaching uh, we taught computer science with, oh, um, uh, we did AI for oceans. And so after that, we decided that we wanted to expand more. I'll just tell you about it. Um, we wanted to expand more into uh, AI and machine learning. And so we decided to build out a middle school unit. Um, I don't know if any of you have done it, um, where you can train a machine learning model and then use it in an app lab project to get predictions back. Um, and it was really exciting for me to work on because I didn't know anything about AI or machine learning before I started this project. And I also got to collaborate very closely with the curriculum team, which with my background in education was very, very fun for me. Um, so it was a brand new space and I had a lot of collaboration and um, we got to be very creative. And so that was a really exciting project for me. Um, you should go try it out. It's in the CSD curriculum. Uh, yeah. Thanks, Erin. We uh, at Code.org all got um, little and my, um, I have two young children and they both love cuddling with the little AI robot and a great way for them to interact sort of in real life, but then also um, so we have another question from uh, someone else on the chat, uh, Marquez Gar uh, Garrett. As a software engineer, how much time is spent in office with other people versus at home and remotely? Now this is tough given COVID times, but um, maybe pre-COVID and post-COVID, um, how much time is spent at home versus versus remote and how, how are you interacting with folks in an office? Uh, let's go with Maureen. Cool. Um, well, I actually started at code.org less than a year ago, so I started remote. I've been remote the whole time, but um, at a previous job, I was full time in the office. So I was in the office, you know, five days a week. And I, I thought that was a lot of fun because you get to like, you know, swivel your chair around, hang out with your coworkers and problem solve at your desk. And usually the tech tech company offices are really fun. There's like snacks and games and stuff like that. Um, but there's pros and cons. Like I, I like working at home. You get to sleep in a little later, which I like. Um, and you have a little bit more freedom if you need to like do laundry during the day or you want to, you know, go out and grab lunch or something like that. It gives you a little bit more freedom. That's great. Thanks, Maureen. I, I really do like at least once a day taking a call over the phone and just walking around my neighborhood. It's a nice way to get out and still be collaborative. Erin, what about you? Um, thinking kind of pre-COVID, post-COVID, how do you um, enjoy or dislike sort of the balance between office? I used to be in an office um, and then moved during the pandemic. So now that I am fully remote, I like being remote. Um, I was doing it one or two days a week to begin with. Um, and I find that it's nice to be able to collaborate with coworkers in person, but I can get what I need to get done um, from home fairly easily. We also get together a few times a year as a whole organization. Um, so you have this really fun bonding time that's primarily social uh, activities. Um, and so to have a little bit of a balance of spending time in person, but mostly at home works really well for me. Thank you. Second to last question for Maureen, and then the last question will go to both of you. Um, actually, if, if we have time, I want to ask both of you, what has been in your, and I'm going to say at code.org. So, uh, Maureen, we'll start with you. Oh, sorry. You cut out for a moment. Can you repeat the question? Oh, no. 
what is the what was the hardest code for you to write? Oh, oh my gosh, <laughs> this is going to be a hard one. Um, you know, I'll just I'll just think to some code that I had to write recently. How about that? Um, there's a lot of hard code that I've had to write. But recently I was trying to uh, solve a problem where it was sort of a data problem. Um, there was a bug caused because we were needing a little bit more data in one of our databases. Um, so there was already a bunch of existing data and then we needed to fill it in with um, a new column of some information to um, kind of complete the picture. So I had to write a script um, that would run and fill in this missing information. And I had to determine what is the right missing information for each of these rows in the database. And that was that took me some time. And also because our database table was really big, there was like over 300 million rows, you know, how am I gonna fill in all of this data and do it in an efficient way and um, do it correctly so that, you know, there wasn't, any sort of bug that was created on the website so that nobody even notices that the data was filled in. Um, so that was a challenge that I was working on recently. Thanks, Maureen and Erin. I'm gonna switch it up on you. Um, we actually just got another great question again from Ann Gorman's class. You didn't major in computer science. Do you wish you had majored in computer science? Mm, I like this question. My answer is no, but um, it is because I think for me personally, I am interested in intersections, right? Like how does neuroscience overlap with education? How does education overlap with technology? What are the places where ideas sort of cross and fuse together? Because I think those are the most interesting spaces for me to work in. And so having this really varied background allows me to come to computer science and to the job that I'm doing now in a way that gives me skills and a perspective that's different than other software engineers. And through that diversity of thought, we then come to better solutions, I think. Um, there's a ton of value in majoring in computer science. And if you're interested in that, absolutely go for it. Um, you shouldn't be deterred because you think it's hard or scary or not for you. Um, but also think about what are my other ideas and interests and curiosities and how can I fuse them together, whatever they may be, because I think that's where you're going to find the most interesting, satisfying places to work or things to study. Thanks, Erin. And the final question for both of you, and I would ask that you try to keep it to 30 seconds or less. Um, what are some of the next steps that students can take that are tuning in um, if they're interested in pursuing similar career paths, if they want to be a software engineer that they start doing now. Maureen, I'll start with you. All right. Um, I would say start taking some classes. Look at what sorts of options there are at your school or maybe outside of your school um, and explore some options. I would say um, listen to what engages you. Think about like that thing where you're like, oh, that's kind of interesting. Listen to that because that'll lead you in a direction to do something that you really enjoy. Um, and then also ask for help. Like, you're, there are people around you that want to help you. There are teachers, there are parents, there are friends. Um, you know, sometimes reaching out and being like, how can you help me get to this goal? Um, you'll, you'll get some surprising help. Thanks, Maureen. How about you, Erin? I think the other thing that you can do is start cataloging what your strengths are. So not just what you're interested in, but what are you good at? How do you leverage them? What could that look like for you? Um, ask a lot of questions, be open, be curious. Um, I think Maureen said like, I didn't even know it was an option 10 years ago. I was super similar. Like I didn't, if you had asked me, I would not have say, said that I was gonna be a software engineer. Um, so be open to possibilities and different paths. And um, also, yeah, just follow those little tendrils of ideas. I think that's where you're gonna find what suits you. Thank you both so much. And, and thank you both for being with me here today. And all of the folks that tuned in from all over the US and around the world, I saw we had some folks internationally. Uh, thanks for answering these questions. And I hope that the students who are tuning in, um, hopefully are, have one more option to consider in their career path. And please tune into future uh, CS Journeys class chats. And with that, I will go ahead and close. Have a great day. Everybody.